Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Welcome to Vlaction Continuous Improvement's overview presentation on completing a process walk for an office Kaizen. I am Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Velaction. I like to start each presentation by going over the objectives of what I hope you will learn from it. First of all, I want you to understand what a process walk is and the steps and requirements of that activity. You should also gain a better understanding of the roles and responsibility of Kaizen participants. There are also quite a few Kaizen process walk forms that are available to you. We'd like you to gain a working knowledge of what these forms are and how they are used. We'd like you to learn how to identify your data collection needs. And finally, we want you to understand what you are expected to accomplish during your process walk. A good place to start is by talking about what a process walk actually is. Basically, it is just a deep dive into the nuts and bolts of a process in order to gain a highly detailed understanding of how an operation is performed. The goal is to quickly become an expert on the current state of that work. The reason we do a process walk instead of just relying upon the knowledge of team members or information recorded in process documents is that there is no substitute for going to Gemba. Gemba is a Japanese term that loosely translated means the actual place where work is done. Seeing the process firsthand does two things. First, it educates those people that don't work in that process area. Second, it makes the people that do work in that area look at the process in an unfiltered way. They see it as a newcomer would see it. So, what purpose does a process walk serve? First off, as I mentioned, it gives you a better understanding of a process because you see it with your own eyes. If you were to just say, read about the process in some work instructions, you would see how the work is supposed to be done, or more accurately, how it was supposed to be done at one point in time. Processes often evolve away from the documentation. There are also hidden factories, which are basically the workarounds that become standard practice but aren't recorded. Again, seeing the process firsthand gives unparalleled insight. The process walk also involves workers in the process. They see and interact with the Kaizen team, so they get a say. They know that any changes that are made are based on the observations that were made recently, rather than on some obscure, outdated document. The process walk also gets up-to-the-minute information into the hands of the improvement team. Information that is on file is suspect. You may not know precisely how it was collected, or it may simply no longer be accurate. Taking timely data prevents avoidable errors. There is also the benefit of taking a snapshot of the process. Getting an instant look at what work is currently in the queue provides insight into how work flows. It often looks different in reality than it does when described. Just be careful. The snapshot nearly always looks different than what is described to you. A Kaizen team will probably be told how the current condition is different from normal because of some special situation. In likelihood though, far more often than not, the snapshot is representative of typical conditions or, more accurately, highlights that there is no normal condition. Something is always going on, so every snapshot is different. The problem is that with a single snapshot, there is a chance that it is just an aberration dig deep and confirm what is really happening. 
you will have to augment the process walk data with some additional information that can't be collected in a short time. As part of the process walk planning, the team leader needs to think ahead and arrange to have running data collected. This might include things like defect information or on-time delivery from suppliers. The point is that a small portion of process walk information needs to be collected in advance. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. On the shop floor, when doing a process walk, you're looking at a physical product. In the office, the work you're looking at is often information about a product. The information might even be the product itself. This presents a special set of challenges. First of all, the specific piece of information you're watching may be a single piece of paper in a file. Even more difficult, it may be a folder located on a network drive that is accessed by people throughout the country. You sometimes have to get creative in how you observe and record this flow of information. When you watch a person assemble a widget, it is easy to see what they're doing. Every person clicking a mouse looks the same, for the most part, regardless of what is on the screen. It can make it challenging to understand what the person is doing. Asking them about their steps slows them down and changes the nature of the observation. It is also difficult to follow office work start to finish. There are notoriously large piles of work between each person in the process. Think of a home loan application. The bank may put just a handful of hours of touch time into the file, but it can take weeks to wind its way through all of the steps to approve it. That means that in an office process walk, you'll be more likely to observe and record a Frankenstein patchwork of items in process. This speeds things up considerably, but also introduces some inaccuracy. On the shop floor, work is generally handed to the person immediately downstream. Of course, sometimes work does need to be transported, but common sense dictates that there is an advantage to keeping processes close together, so people instinctively try to shorten distances. In the office, however, physical files are much easier to transport than large heavy objects. In the modern world, more and more work is done electronically. This means that the flow of office work bounces around much more than you would see on the shop floor. Depending upon the layout of your facility and the nature of the work, there may be a fair bit of walking. The final challenge you'll have is that office work is often done in small cubicles. People do not need much space to do their work, and they generally do not move around much. That means that it will be a challenge to have a full Kaizen team observe a worker. Try to get creative so as many people as possible can observe the actual process a person is doing. The steps of a process walk are relatively simple. Your first task will be to assign roles. We'll talk about these jobs in just a moment. Before you go down and talk to anybody in the work area, make sure you have a plan. You want to disturb them as little as possible. Also, make sure you cover all of the bases so you don't have to go back and gather up any additional information. Once your planning is complete, go observe the process. The team should regroup once the observation is complete and consolidate the information. As they look over the data they have collected, the team will often uncover additional questions or gaps in their information. In these cases, the team should send a small group back to close out any information gaps on what they need to know to make improvements. There are several jobs that need to be done during a process walk. Some of these jobs may seem kind of small. One of the reasons the jobs are split the way they are is to keep the entire team engaged. If everybody has a role to play, they all pay attention. But, depending upon the size of your team, individuals may have dual roles. The team should have a leader assigned for the process walk. This may be the team leader, or it might be a person from the work area being assessed. The walk leader keeps the team on track for the plan, as well as lets the people being observed know what is about to happen. Those individuals should already be aware of the Kaizen event from during the planning process. The walk leader lets them know specifically what is going on with the process walk. 
The team should also have a spokesperson who will do most of the talking during the process walk. That's not to say that nobody else can speak, but we don't want a person to get peppered by questions from all directions. The process recorder is the scribe for the team. Everyone can take notes and should take notes, but the process recorder manages the official documentation. The timer is one of the extra roles that can easily be rolled in with the process recorder. This person manages the stopwatch and updates the process recorder on the time. The pacer measures the distance that an employee walks while doing his or her job. For many people doing office work, the distance will be zero. But some people walk to file cabinets and printers and to get approval or back and forth from a customer service desk. The pacer can either count steps and convert to feet, or they can use a measuring wheel. The flowchart artist makes a visual representation of how the work flows in the area being improved. This should include the flow of the product, information, and how the people move. The first draft of the sketch will likely be fairly rough, but should contain the relevant information needed to clean it up later. Anybody who is not assigned a specific job is a waste recorder. They simply observe the process for any waste that they see. People in all roles should record waste, but the waste recorders do it without the distraction of another job. You should always have at least one dedicated waste recorder. We recommend using our waste recording form for capturing this information. Once you have assigned roles, make your plan. Obviously, you must know where you are going. If there is a lot to look at, you may have to split your team to cover all the locations. People frequently forget to include travel time in their planning. They plan 20 minutes at a location that takes 10 minutes to get to. While I am on the subject of planning your time, be certain to stay on schedule. This is especially true early in your process walk. You don't want to get behind and feel rushed everywhere you go for the rest of your stops. I also encourage you to think of a related work area that makes sense to visit. This would commonly be stakeholders and internal customers and suppliers. It is important to communicate your plan to the people you'll be visiting. I also encourage you to know in advance if there are people in any work area that are on the must talk to list. These are the influencers in those work areas. Having them on your side will be important in getting any changes to stick. By including them in your process walk, you're making sure that their concerns will be addressed. If at all possible, I recommend watching several cycles of work. It helps you uncover any of the variations in the process that you might not see if you watch it only once. The biggest limitation will be the cycle time of the process. If the work takes too long, you may only be able to watch a single cycle or possibly only a portion of a cycle. Consider a design engineer who is working on a drawing. It might take several days or longer to complete the design. In those situations, you may be required to simply talk about what the person would do. I also recommend that you try to follow a specific work unit from start to finish. If there are many cues in the operation, you may have to ask the downstream operator to pull a specific piece of work from the bottom of the queue. In situations where this is not possible, consider whether you can come back and watch later when that specific file is pulled. With the plan completed, it is time to actually watch the process. I always recommend that teams watch the process once before writing anything down or asking any questions. This lets them see the process with an unbiased eye. Use common sense here, though. If the cycle is long and watching without recording means you'd only be able to get data for one cycle, then it is probably better to record both. Otherwise, though, it really helps to watch quietly first. I also recommend going into your interviews with a script. It helps keep the conversation flowing if the person is reluctant, and it helps keep you from missing anything. There is also a psychological aspect to it. If you look prepared, the people you are talking to will take you more seriously. They'll have more confidence in the improvement process if it actually looks like a process. The form on the screen is our office process questionnaire. It provides a good foundation of questions to ask. Make sure when you are watching the process, you are listening to what the person is saying. Don't just ask them what they do. Ask what they would improve. Ask what bugs them the most. 
ask what worries them when they show up in the morning. The key is really to get the person talking. The more they are talking instead of listening to the process walk team, the more information you will get. As part of the lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of lean Lego training packages. These include our lean Lego flow simulation, mistake proofing or pokey oak lean Lego exercise, and our visual controls and 5S lean Lego exercise. We've also got an office flow simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. I want to take a moment to make sure you understand that the process walk is an interview, not an interrogation. The people doing the process did nothing wrong. The way you go about things matters a lot. If you berate the process, many people take it as a personal attack. It is what they do every day. There is also a good chance that they had a hand in creating the process. I also recommend that you avoid the use of sarcasm. It can be funny, but it is a mocking form of humor. It is very easy to cross the line between entertaining and insulting. You want to make the discussion a problem-solving effort. The best way to do that is to create a partnership with the person you're talking to, and that doesn't happen unless you have a good two-way communication. And finally, make your parents proud by using great manners. Ask permission before you talk to the people on your interview list, and be nice when you're talking to them. The more comfortable a person is with you, the better the conversation will go. There are a handful of helpful tools that will assist you in making an efficient and effective use of your process walk time. The first is the process recording sheet. It provides an organized way to collect information about process steps. In addition to cycle time, you'll also record the walking distance and the amount of work in the queue. You'll also ballpark the percent value added of the step. This form gives you a good idea of the starting point of the process you are assessing. The Office Process Capacity Sheet is another tool that can be helpful in certain situations. It helps you determine the amount of staff you'll need to complete the process given the current cycle time and the demand. It also looks at any machines you might be using for your process. While we don't typically think of office work as machine-oriented, there are a few that might create issues. Your ability to print might be a constraint. You may have a limited number of seats for an expensive piece of software. You might be limited by the number of phones in your office. This tool helps you look for similar situations. One of the more useful tools is the waste recording form. This tool is simply a log of all the things you see that take more effort than they should. Our form provides a place to categorize the types of waste. This helps when you're making improvements, but also triggers ideas as you record waste. In addition, there's a space to make a quick assessment of how important fixing the problem is and how hard it would be to do so. Another outstanding tool is the flowchart. Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.